Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you again for the word of God, for the testimony of Jesus. And Lord, as we are coming to seek understanding and wisdom and grace, as your Sabbath approaches, Lord, we long and desire to have a closer and more abiding walk with you. Please, Lord, be with us. Be with those that are preparing um, to come here, those that are on their way, and those that are here, Lord, those that are preparing their hearts to meet with you in peace on thy holy Sabbath. But Lord, we know that you are on the ground, and we ask that you might make your presence known. Be with me, Lord. Forgive me my sin. Help me, Lord, that I might be able to convey the, the things that you desire for your people to know. And all this we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. We're going to be dealing with uh, a practical subject today. Can you hear me? Okay. We're going to be dealing with the subject of hydrotherapy or water therapy, okay? And since this is a uh, practical training class, I'm going to be doing some demonstrations. I may call upon one or two of you um, for, uh, for a demonstration. Um, and so, but before we do that, if you would, um, well, let me go through some things first on the screen so that we can keep up, okay? I have on the screen a question. What is a medical missionary? And what do you think a medical missionary is? Just raise your hand. Who, what do you think a medical missionary is? So a medical missionary is a follower of Christ. It's someone who uh, teaches them how to regain health. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Go with me in your Bibles, if you would, to the book of, Revel, uh, excuse me, 3 John. 3 John, the book just before Jude, which is just before Revelation. 3 John. 3 John, and we're going to go to verse 2. All right? 3 John, verse 2. The Bible says in 3 John, verse 2, Beloved, I wish above what? All, All things that thou mayest do what? prosper and what be in, be in health even as what thy soul, soul prospereth. so if I were to write this on the board when he said beloved I wish above what all, all things right that thou mayest what prosper and what be in health and how did he qualify that? He said, even as thy what? Soul. Thy soul prospers. So that means that God wants you to have the same kind of spiritual health and what's another word for spiritual health? Salvation. The saving grace, an understanding of the plan of salvation. Yes, sir. Okay. He wants you and I to have, and I apologize for the lightness of this marker, but he wants you and I to have the same kind of health and the same kind of prosperity, financial and otherwise, social, you understand? Ministerial, every kind of prosperity. He says, I want you to have it the same way you have health. And I want these two to be equal as your spiritual health. You understand? And so a medical missionary's job is to help people to restore their physical health in the same light as their spiritual health. All right? All right. And so the question on the board is, what's a medical missionary? Well, we have this, uh, this little acronym called God's Plan. Okay? And we've all seen this before. If you, I learned this. I didn't invent this. This is something that God gave to the church. It's a part of the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And so this is what I, I learned this acronym from Thomas Jackson. But in the spirit of prophecy, she, she lists off these things. And so this is God's plan. And God's plan that you would be in health, godly trust, open air, daily exercise, sunshine, plenty of rest, lots of water, 
always temperate and of course nutrition and so God's desire for you and I is that we would follow his plan and that we would then be in health all right and so these are his laws of health they are also his eight doctors and they are also his eight medical detectives all right and so God wants you and I to be restored now we're gonna be dealing with water and there's a reason why I believe the Lord wants to deal with water you know we hear a lot of things about medical missionary work we hear a lot about herbs and and we want to know these things and it's important to know them right but God wants what you and I to know about health and what you and I to do to be very practical what word did I say he wants us to have a practical experience with Christ a practical experience if it's not practical, guess what? You're not going to do it. You understand what I'm saying? You know, one of the reasons why so many people fail at having restoring their health is because it is not practical for them. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. And you know what? Forget it. Just give me that bag of chips. I'll be good. I'm going to pray. They're corn, right? And so let's talk about Dr. Water today, all right? It says here, hydrotherapy or water therapy. It says, um, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest asked of him, and he would have given thee what? What kind of water? Go with me in your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, and we're going to go to verse 1. I believe that all the foundations of health, both for prosperity in financial and in social things, also for prosperity when it comes to uh, your physical health, as well as spiritual health, they're all found in God's Word. We have a school in our school, the Three Angels School of Health, our main textbook, and actually I've had students get mad at me over this, they got mad because our textbook is the Bible. We use other books as secondary books. We do not use, you know, books by any of the great men as a primary book. We use the book of the, the Word of God first. And because we do this, our education is founded upon something that is more solid than man. It says, Revelation 22 and verse 1, the Bible says, and he showed me what? A pure river of water of life, clear as what? Crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And so what kind of water was it? Pure water, river of life, right? And so God, you and I cannot have health if we don't have good, pure water. Now, many times you live in a place, even if you have a well, if you have a spring, the water might be a little bit hard or it might have minerals in it. If you can, the goal is to have soft water for drinking and bathing. You understand? But water, hard water is better than no water. Do you understand? And so we're going to be dealing with water in many different ways. All right. This says here, water is cleansing inside and out. It represents life. You, can't, you might not be able to see this, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. John 4, 14. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be what? Whiter than snow. Psalms 51, 7. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, Isaiah 116. It says, And why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Water is represented as a means of cleansing. None of us take a bath with 7-Up. Coca-Cola, tea, Gatorade, any of those things. I'm just listing things that, you know, many of us might drink. You know, even... Uh, uh, some of the other things, pure water. So now I'm going to talk to you about a bath. I'm going to deal with some very practical things uh, before I get, I'm going to show you and uh, give you an opportunity to do 
to learn some hydrotherapy treatments, but first let me deal with this, okay? The bath. The most neglected part of health that most adults do not do is take a bath. I, I, was, I was given a, a class in Los Angeles about a few weeks ago, and, and a man came to me after I did a, a, another study on, on water, and he came to me, and I, after showing him the quotes, he says, you know what? I haven't taken a bath in 70 years. He normally takes showers. And many of us normally take showers. But watch this. She says, your experience was shown to be as not reliable because opposed to natural law. It is in conflict with the unchangeable principles of nature. Superstition, my dear sister, arising from a what? From a what? Let me stop there, okay? What did I just write down? Nine tenths. Ninety percent, nine tenths of all sick people. How many? Ninety percent could be healed according to the spirit of prophecy if they only believe so. Do you know that the reason why most people are going to die of their illness is because something that their mom taught them? I was in Fiji and I was doing a talk and I, I, I made a bold statement. I was teaching a, um, we had, there was a sanitarium and it was a hall about this size and there were a lot of people there. And at this time there were, uh, there were many that had come in for a cleanse and they were heavy, they were trying to lose weight. And I asked them who the largest mass murderer in the world is. And some people, you know, they think of, you know, think of the Soviet Union or the Catholic Church, because, you know, the Soviet Union killed about 80 million people in the 20th century. The Chinese, they killed almost as many. They killed at least 20 million. The, 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 the Nazis, they killed at least 6 million Jews, not including others. But do you know who the greatest mass murderer in the world is? No, brother. No, no, no. She is somebody that you know. Your mother. You know why? If you have diabetes, type 2 primarily, you have diabetes type 2, and you eat the way that you've always eaten, who taught you how to get diabetes? Now, I'm not trying to beat up on your mom. I love my mother's passed away. But my mother taught me to eat, you know, chitlins and to eat fried chicken. And we would never, ever have a, a, a um, what do you call that, a, a gathering of the family if some animal didn't die. Right? And my mother got sick because of what she was taught by her mother. Am I wrong? Now, I'm not beating up on women. I'm just saying that the biggest mass murder in the world is mothers. And mothers who love their children, and I was talking to this large group of people, and this man, and I said to them, listen, if you want to lose weight, you have to stop eating at your mother's house. Because you didn't get to be 300 and 400 pounds without your mama's consent. You understand? And I said, you have to get a new mother. You know what mother you need to get? The Bible says that we all have a new mother in heaven. And what is her name? New Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all, the Bible says. Amen? Amen. And she teaches her children what? To be temperate in all things. She teaches her children to eat for strength and not for drunkenness. She teaches her children, you know, the principles of life and health. Am I right? And so what I'm saying to you is, is that our mothers have trained us in how to eat, how to drink, and how to dress. And our eating, our drinking, and our dressing are, are, what kill, are what's killing us because nine-tenths of us will believe what our mothers and other people like us have taught over the Word of God. You'll show somebody something from the Word of God. You'll show them a principle in the Word of God. They'll go, yeah, but um, 
and then they'll start to, to cite an experience, right? And so here it says, she, Sister White says, your experience was shown to be as not reliable because, as opposed, because opposed to natural law. It is in conflict with the unchangeable principles of what? Nature, superstition, my dear sister, arising from a what? A diseased imagination arrays in you in conflict with science and principle. Which shall be yielded? Which one are you going to give up? Your diseased imagination? Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, what, is, what does it say? So if your imagination is diseased, then what else is going to be diseased? The entire system. If God can change our mind, and this is what the, the gospel is, he says that we be renewed in our mind. Go with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Now, now listen to me. I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to write something on the board. Now watch this. Now ladies, I'm going to show you this. How many of you, how many of you ladies in here have daughters? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. Let me show you a principle. Excuse me. How many of you ever heard of something called epigenetics? Okay, do you know what epigenetics is? Let me show you, okay? Epigenetics is this. All right, so your mother. Your mother, when she was pregnant with you, when, she w when you were in her womb, and if you're, you're a woman, then all of your eggs, listen to me, for your children were developed in you while you were in your mother's womb. Sorry, let me back up. Let's go with your grandmother. When your grandmother was pregnant with your mom, your egg was present in your grandmother, in your mom, while your mom was being developed. So now watch. So whatever your mother experienced then was passed on to her, her offspring. Okay? And so, remember the Bible says unto the third and fourth what? Generation. Generation of them that hate me, right? And so what happens is, let's say that your mother was under a lot of stress while she was pregnant. What happens, what happens to the DNA of the eggs that she is producing while she's under stress. Do you know what happens? In your cell, in your, in your cells, in your, you have your cells here, right? Okay. Inside here is the DNA. Well, the DNA, it looks kind of like, kind of like that. It's kind of almost a cross shape, right? The ends of your, the ends of these things here, these things right here at the edges are called telomeres. What are they called? Telomeres. telomeres. The telomere of the DNA of a woman that is stressed begins to fray. So that the DNA is exposed and not covered. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when that happens, it will change the expression of the DNA. It won't change the DNA. The stress will change the expression which genes are expressed. Do you understand? So if a woman is stressed out while she's pregnant, then she can actually be destroying three generations. Now you understand? You understand how important it is, ladies, that your minds be renewed? Do you know the thing that I do, at, uh, what I do and I teach is at my home? See, right now, my wife and I, we're staying with my father and mother-in-law because of a tragedy in our family. And so we're spending the summer there. But at my house, it is, we leave music playing all day long. Scripture songs, you know, godly music, we'll let it play all day long. Do you know why? Because music is one of the most powerful healing um, entities that exist in the world. When David, 
when David went to Saul and he would play his harp, right? When he would just play his musical instrument, what would happen to Saul? Anybody remember reading this? The demon would what? Leave. Now watch this. When you and I are stressed out, we are oppressed by a spirit. Because that spirit is trying to get you not to remember the Sabbath. That spirit is trying to get you not to remember to trust in Jesus. That spirit is trying to get you to focus upon the, the things of this life so much that you lose sight that something, this, whatever the issue is, is blocking your view of Jesus. Do you understand? All right? So now watch. While you're being afflicted, what's happening is the demons, what they want to do is affect the next generation. Because what did we learn from, King, from, uh, from Jacob? You remember when Jacob was with Laban? Anybody remember the story of Jacob? Jacob served seven years for, for Rachel, but then he got tricked and ended up those seven years for, for Leah. Then he had to serve another seven years for, for Rachel, right? And so, uh, and so but then, but Laban, he, he, Laban uh, pulled something on him. And so Jacob, he said, so after his 14 years were up, he said, listen, give me my wives and give me my children and let me go. And he says, well, why don't you work for me? He says, okay, well, what will be my hire? He goes, don't give me anything. Let me take all of the ugly sheep, basically, from you. Let me take the ring straight and the, and, and the brown, the brown cattle, and you'll keep the nice and pretty white ones. And so then what did Jacob do? He then brought back, he, he then brought sticks, and he stuck them in the ground, and he peeled them, the Bible says, that led stripes in them, right? And he put those sticks, all those sticks, right in front of the watering troughs so that when the females would come and they would eat, or excuse me, drink, the males would come and mate with them and both of them would be looking at the sticks that were ring straight and striped. And the principle was what by beholding, they changed the next generation. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a genetic principle. Let me give it to you another way. Many parents can trace back the music that was playing when their children were conceived. Do you know that? Do you know that the music that's playing when your children are conceived, and I'm getting off from water here, that the music that is playing, because music and the spirit are connected. Go with me in your Bibles. You're in Romans chapter 12. Go with me to Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a what? A living what? Sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. Which, excuse me, thank you so much. Um, it says, uh, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so the mind is what God is trying to transform. Do you know that's why God doesn't generally try to heal us physically first? He will to show us the power that he has to renew our minds, but often he's, his desire is to heal us spiritually so that he can then trust us with a healthy body. Okay? I was going to go to another text, but now I forgot. So then let me keep moving, okay? Your strong prejudices and very set ideas in, re in regard to what course is best to be pursued relative to yourself have long held you from good. I have understood your case for years, but have felt incompetent to present the matter in so clear a matter to you um, that you could see and comprehend it, but to put, uh, and to put a practical use to the light given you. This is from third volume of the testimonies, page 69. There are many invalids today who would ever remain so because they cannot be convinced that their experience is not reliable. The brain is the capital of the body, the seat of all the nervous forces and of mental action. The nerves proceeding from the brain control the body. By the brain nerves, mental impressions are conveyed to all the nerves of the body as by what? Telegraph, Telegraph wires. 
and they control the vital action of every part of the system. All the organs of motion are governed by the communications they receive from the brain. If your mind is impressed and fixed that a bath will injure you, now listen, there is no reason a bath should ever injure you, but watch this. If your mind is impressed and fixed that a bath will injure you, the mental impression is communicated to all the nerves of the body. The nerves control the circulation of the blood. Therefore, the blood is, through the impression of the mind, confined to the blood vessels. And the good effects of the bath are what? Do you know that your mind can overwrite nature's laws? That's what she's saying. Because see, the part of your brain, the part of your nervous system that controls is called your autonomic nervous system. And your autonomic nervous system is not controlled generally by your frontal lobe. You don't normally control your heart rate, right? You can't normally control these different things. But she's talking about the fact that your feelings, listen to me, your feelings on something can be so strong that they can override God's good for you. All this is because the blood is prevented by the mind and will from flowing readily and from coming to the surface to stimulate, arouse and promote the circulation. For instance, you are impressed that if you bathe, you will become chilly. The brain sends this intelligence to the nerves of the body and the, and the blood vessels held in obedience to your will cannot perform their office and cause a reaction after the bath. There is no reason in what? Science or what else? Philosophy why an occasional bath taken with judicious care should do you anything but real good. Especially is this the case where there is little but little exercise to keep the muscles in action and to aid the circulation of the blood through the system. Bathing frees the skin from the accumulation of impurities which are constantly collecting and keeps the skin moist and supple thereby increasing and equalizing what? Now watch, now this is something to you. I want to encourage every single one of you to start taking baths at least twice a week. At least twice a week. If you are ill or if you are, listen to me, if you are depressed or discouraged, I encourage you to take a bath. Do you know why? Because the water has the ability to calm the nerves. And when your nerves are calmed and when your body is at rest, your mind can be open. I often will go in the bath and will sit down and spend time with Jesus. Amen. I'll spend an hour in the bath. I'll go in there and I'll turn the lights down. I might light some candles. You know why? Because I want my mind to be relieved. I have, I have a condition called asthma. And it has many different things. I, I don't have a lot of mucus in my system, but stress, environmental factors. I'm allergic to almost every kind of tree and almost every kind of grass. I went and got the back scratch test and they checked it and there's like little mountain ranges on my back from the allergic reaction. But one of the things that helps me, now listen to me, when you take a bath, if you are having digestive issues, guess what the bath is gonna help you to do? Have better bowel movements. Did you know that the bath is like, taking a bath is like eating from the tree of life? It's that kind of, it's that kind of effect upon the nerves. It is amazing what it can do. And so I'm talking about a bath. And if you're, and if you know you're taking a bath and maybe you need, um, you know what I do is I have, this is my little medical missionary kit, which I keep a bunch of things in. And so let me see what I have in here that might be helpful. You can put some herbs in there and you can put in this here, which um, I carry with me. This is a little wonderful treatment that is very good for your nerves and your muscles. And apparently somebody who wasn't me put this in here. So I'll just rip it open. Anybody know what this is? Epsom salt. Epsom salt, putting in one, two, or even more, four cups of Epsom salt in a bath will never do you harm. 
Now listen, if you are a diabetic, a type 1 diabetic, you need to be more careful with taking a very hot bath. When you take a bath, there are different temperatures that you're taking to do different things. Do you understand? If you're wanting to relieve the nerves, you don't want the bath to be super hot. You want the bath to be hot, but not, but not burning hot. You're not trying to burn the dirt off. As a friend of mine, wife, he used to, she used to say, my husband likes the water so hot, he's trying to burn the dirt off. And so, but what you want is, you want it to be warm enough so that you can relax. Close your eyes and think of Jesus. When I go in the bath, often I will put on some very soft, nice music. And I will rest. And that rest, when I get out of the bath, I will always rinse with cold water. And then I will get fully dressed and get in the bath and get in the bed. It's good to do before you go to bed. Now, when you take a bath, one of the things that's going to happen is when you're taking a bath is your, um, while, you're, while you're bathing, the pores are going to open up. But when you are done and you rinse with cold water, do you know what happens? The pores close. But what happens to all that heat your body's been taking in? It's trapped now in the body with those closed pores. And now you're going to, when you get out of the bath, you're going to start perspiring. And Sister White says that after you take a bath, you should rest for at least a half hour. And the reason is, is when you rest, it's going to boost your immune system by 50,000 fold. Not 50,000 times, 50,000 fold. Yes, sir. Yarrow herb tea really opens up the pores. The yarrow? Yes. Yes, and there are different herbs that you can do. You can use yarrow. You can put peppermint in. You can do many different things, something to your liking. You understand? You can make... Now, many of us have aversions to water one way or another. Whether it's drinking water, whether it's bathing, whether it's, you know, showering. I know that when I was a boy, my mom couldn't get me to take a bath. She couldn't get me to drink water. I used to run, my, she would make me go in, I would be 12 years old, and she would have me go in the bathroom, take my bath, and I would go in, run the tub of water, splash it around, sp put, spray some on my face, and then put some on the towel, come out with a towel wrapped around and go in my room. I don't know why I hated taking a bath. But I would do that, and my mother would just come to me and she'd say, come here. And she would do the smell test. Uh, get back in there, and this time, use soap and water. Amen. And so, and so the bath, I, I really want to encourage each and every one of you, it is a neglected tool for healing. Now, many people, a lot of times when you buy a new home, you know a lot of new homes are not coming with bathtubs. Do you know that? Because bathtubs are expensive. The space is expensive, they say. And so, and if you do get a bathtub, it's going to be shallow. Right? Those, those deep bathtubs they have. My wife and I live in a house, and the number one selling point of this house, it was not, it wasn't in, it just, it's in the country, but it was the bathtub. Ask my wife. We, as soon as we saw the bathtub, we're like, done, we'll take it. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why we're having a hard time moving. That's exactly right. All right. Persons in health should in no, why, no account neglect bathing. They should by all means bathe as often as how often, everyone? Now, bathing is different than showering. Some people say, well, I shower and then I rinse with, hot, with cold water. Isn't that just as good? The answer is no, it's not. Because guess what you're doing while you're showering? Standing up. It's hard to relax while you're standing up. You relax when you repose and surrender. Go with me in your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Revelation chapter 3. I want to talk to you about the principle that Jesus gave to the final church. Revelation 3 and verse 14. When you get there, just say amen. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14. The Bible says in Revelation 3 and verse 14, And unto the angel of the church of what? Laodicea write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. 
I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. So then because thou art what, everyone? Lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will do what? Spew thee out of my mouth. One of the things that the church of Laodicea needs, it needs a different experience. It's having a lukewarm experience where the water is nice and tepid. I'm trying to teach our little girl to like hot and cold water, not just, you know, that lukewarm water, you know, that's comfortable. Because I want her to have an experience, the experience that comes with health from hot and cold. Not too hot, do you understand? And so she says, those who are not in health have impurities of the blood, and the skin is not in a healthy condition. The multitude of pores or little mouths through which the body breathes become what? Clogged and filled with what? What's your largest elimination organ in your body? Skin. It's your skin. It's not your digestive tract. It's your skin. And the reason why many people have skin issues is because they have toxins in their skin, toxins in their system. If the body can't get it out through your urinary tract uh, system, if it can't get it out through your uh, uh, digestive system, if it can't get it out in, uh, through, through your breath, then it will send it through the skin. And so bathing will help with that. She says, the skin needs to be carefully and thoroughly cleansed that the pores may do their work in what? Freeing the body from impurities. Therefore, what kind of persons? Feeble persons who are what? Disease surely need the advantages and what? Blessings of bathing as often as twice a week and frequently even more than that is positively, positively what? So the very bottom, the very basic is what? Twice a week. You have to schedule bathing. You have to schedule bathing. And, you know, in my house, it's a blessing because our bathtub is separate than the, than the shower. So if I want to sit in the tub for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, I will many times will take a book with me. I'm, I just like, you know, I need it. And my wife will go in and get in the shower and come out. And she'll take her bath later on. It says, whether a person is sick or well, respiration is what? more free and easy if bathing is practiced. This is why it's good for those who have asthma or allergies or some kind of respiratory issues, right? Bathing. It says, by it the muscles become more what, everyone? Now some of us are getting older, and, and how many of you can stand up and touch the floor with your hands? Don't raise your hands. You remember, you see the children running around here, my little girl, you know, she is jumping and flitting and dancing and can hardly stand still. And she can reach things that many of us when we get older can't reach because of in use, right? Atrophy has happened. The things you don't use, you begin to lose. And so what happens is, is while you're in the tub, blood is going to the muscles, it's filling those muscles, those long muscles, your, the bone muscles, the skeletal muscles, and the blood is going through, and now is the time that I tell people to do their stretching. Stretch in the tub. You can stretch in the shower, but stretching in the tub is easier. You're sitting down. You can turn your back, and if you have lower back issues, you can start to try to, you know, oh, do your stretching in the tub because the water is warm, and the Wherever the heat is, that's where the blood's going to go. It says, by it the muscles become more flexible, the mind and body are alike invigorated, the intellect is made brighter, and every faculty becomes livelier. The bath is a soother of the nerves. It promotes general perspiration, quickens the circulation, overcomes obstructions in the system, and acts beneficially upon the what, everyone? Kidneys, Kidneys and what else? Urinary. Urinary organs. Have mercy. Bathing helps the what? The bowels, stomach, and liver, giving what? What does it give to them? Energy. Energy and new life to each. The tree of life is in a bathtub in many ways. It promotes digestion, and instead of the system being weakened, it is strengthened. Instead of increasing the liability to take cold, a bath properly taken fortifies against cold because the circulation is improved. And the uterine organs, which are more or less congested, are relieved, for the blood is brought to the surface and a more easy and regular flow of the blood through all the blood vessels is obtained. 
Now, wasn't that a blessing? I did all of that talking just to try to convince you to get in the bathtub. <laughs> but it's a positive thing. My little girl, I'll put her in a bathtub and she will just play and play and play and play and play. Come on, honey, it's time to get out. You and I can have the same kind of life as our children have. You know, when our, you know when the child goes to the, to the toilet and you'll see, and they'll have a bowel movement and it'll be like, you know, a foot and a half long and re really thick, and you're looking at that little child and you're saying, how did all of that come out of you? Do you know why? Part of it is, yes, they're active and they're doing their, they're jumping around, but the other part is the bath. So, this is Ellen White writing to her son. I want to stop there. Now, I want to move on to something else, okay? She says this, you must, in, you must manage to bathe as often as twice a week, she says to her son. Don't neglect this. He was a grown man. She's telling him to take a bath. Okay? And so, um, she says, many are not benefited by taking baths because they do not practice lying down after a bath and giving nature time to react. If they cannot rest at least half a what? An hour after a bath, they should, exercise by, um, they should exercise by walking or working to keep from a sense of chilliness in order for a reaction. Those who have baths, who have taken baths carelessly and have suffered in consequence, receive the impression that it was the bath which injured them when it was their own injudicious management that produced bad results. All right. So let me... Um, I want to stop there, okay? I want to move to something else. I want to look at my time. I don't have very much. I need to stop in just a few moments. All right, so let's talk about healing with water, okay? Now, many of us um, have, in our experience, gotten injured. Anybody ever injure a ligament or tear, uh, you know, get a tear in a muscle or, or, um, or you know, ha get a sprain or something like that? Okay, so now I was in 2000 and, anyway, about 10 years ago, I was, uh, 20, 2004, I was in Washington, D.C., and I was working with a crew, and we were, there was a hurricane that had come through, and it knocked over a lot of trees. And I worked with a man who had a tree, co uh, a tree company uh, that he used to clean up trees, and so uh, he had a tree business, and I we were cutting down a lot of trees and cleaning them up, and I hurt my arm where I, where I got a sprain, a really, really bad sprain. And it was going to probably be, I was going to be out for like two weeks. I had to keep it up. You know, I couldn't move it. It was sore. It was painful. And I did a treatment that I want to show you about um, this morning, or this evening, rather. Okay? So first off, let me go ahead and put some water in this bucket here. And I'm going to ask for a volunteer. Who wants to be a volunteer wants to pull up their sleeve for me? Is there anyone? Anyone here? Come on over, brother. All right? OK. So I'm going to have two buckets of water, OK? They're not quite the same size, but they're the very best I could find. In one of them, I'm going to put, thank you so much. It's hot. Be careful. OK, let me test it. OK, a little bit more. Okay, that's warm, warm enough for the experience that I need. Okay, now you can do this for your legs. You can do this for any part of your body. Now this one here, this bucket is just regular water and I'm going to put some ice in it, okay? Actually, excuse me. Oh, I busted it, that's all right. There we go. No, no, it's okay, I got it, I got it, there you go. Sorry. My sister saw that. I just wasted all her ice. Thank you. All right. So what we're going to do is, what you want is you want a bucket that has water as hot as you can take it. Okay? Let me move this out of the way, brother. And then you want another bucket with water as cool and with ice in it, okay? And so what you're going to do, if the person has... Sorry, I'm just getting the stuff in. I really apologize about that mess. So what you're going to do is you're going to have the person put their arm in the water. Now if the person is a type, is a diabetic, 
and they have, um, they, they know they have diabetes, that's the only contraindication that I know of with this type of hydrotherapy. You don't want the water to be so hot that the person might get a burn, because even if they get a first degree burn, they can die. In Fiji, while I was in Fiji, there was a group of people there that um, they didn't want to go get medical missionary training from a group of people that they didn't like. So they just started looking on the internet and doing the things that they thought, and so they started giving hydrotherapy treatments, and they gave a lady a, a hot foot bath, and the lady had diabetes. The lady got an infection and died. And the major newspapers on the front page, the big paper, it might have been on the Sunday, says the Adventists kill woman. For years, people were like, whenever the Adventists would come do a health work, we did a, we did a, a, a meetings where all the people came out from um, the villages, and we were, you know, I was the physician on call there, and people didn't come out at first because they're like, you guys might kill me, like you did that lady. You understand? You need to not, you, it's be wise as a serpent and what else? Harmless as a dove. All right, brother, so I want you to put your arm in here. And it's, it's up to your elbow if you can. And you know what, is there, will it, here, let me take a little bit out. Go ahead and pull your old water arm out real quick. So, actually here, why don't you pour a little bit right here for me? That's good, that's good. All right. And so, he's going to soak his arm in all the way to the elbow. Now, the reason why he's soaking his arm to the elbow, because if he hurt his elbow, if he strained his elbow, then what's happening is, is the, the ligaments and the tendons do not have their own blood supply. And so what happens when the, when the hot water comes to the area, the blood vessels swell and there is leakage of blood to those tendons and to the, to the affected area. And it will bring, when the Bible says the life of the flesh is what? It's in the blood. The life of the flesh is not the blood, but the life of the flesh is in the blood. That means that the blood is the vehicle that carries life. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have them in there for five minutes, and we're going to have them just in there for a couple of minutes, but let me write this down. The life of the flesh is where? In the blood. That's right, Leviticus 17.11. Your body has several needs. The number one need that you have is oxygen, okay? Your number two need is what? Okay. Water, then nutrients, right? Which is your food sources. Then number four, you need to remove waste. Remove waste matter. And number five, you need to be free from toxins. Every cell, um, every cell in your body needs this. Do you understand? And so the life of the flesh is in the blood. The blood is what carries these things. The blood carries the oxygen. The blood carries the, the water. The blood carries the nutrients. And so when you have the blood, when you, when you use the hot water, it's going to bring the heat, and the heat's going to bring the blood to the surface, pulling it from another part. If you have, let's say, um, let's say somebody has a migraine. And when you get a migraine, well, what do you do? Well, that means that the, the brain has congestion on it, so you want to pull water or pull the, the blood from the congested area, so you give them a hot foot bath. And then the blood will come down toward the feet, therefore relieving pressure from the brain, and at the same time, you'll have her drink water every 10 minutes. And at the same time, you can put a cool cloth upon the head, which will cause the blood to go away, because cold sends the blood away, hot brings the blood to you. I mean, brings the blood to the surface, okay? So the hot water is bringing it up, and what'll happen is, and I didn't, we didn't time it, but that's okay. Go ahead and bring your arm up. His arm will be nice and, nice and red. Immediately, he'll dump it in here, all the way down, for no more than a minute. So five minutes to the hot, a minute to the cold. The moment one finger touches the cold, now listen to me, this is how powerful the body is. The moment one finger touches the cold, all the pores in the entire body close. You understand? And so he does this. So then he, he takes his arm out of the cold, uh, puts it back in the hot. Now this time when he puts it in, it's going to feel, go ahead and stick it all the way in. It might feel like a thousand needles are stinging him because the nerves. You understand? 
But what happens is as he goes from the hot to the cold, back to the hot again, it's bringing blood to the surface, and then the cold sends the blood away. And then the hot brings it back, and the back and forth between the hot and the cold, it increases circulation, which will increase health. It's going to bring all the building, all the, 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 the white blood cells and all the things that the body needs to restore. I got hurt, and when I was going to be out for two weeks, instead I was out for two days, and I was back to full strength in two days. If you break a bone, you get that bone set, you can do the exact same thing. Instead of eight weeks out, you might be a couple of weeks out. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? This is the benefit of hydrotherapy. It is, listen, yes, hold on one moment. Do you know who uses this all the time? Trillion dollar industry is based upon hydrotherapy. It's called the National Football League. Because those doctors, those people who are into sports medicine, they use hydrotherapy to get the athlete back up into peak performance in a shorter amount of time. They have them do, they have them sit in the tub with ice and they have them sit in the tub with, with water, you know, the sauna type tub and they have them going back and forth. Now you can do hydrotherapy in many ways, but this is one of them. Go ahead, brother, and put it back. Now you do this, every time you do a hydrotherapy treatment, you always finish with cold. Because you always want this, this, the pores to close. Do you understand? This is the principles. Yes, ma'am. Now, uh, on contractions, sometimes you've got calcium between some of the ones that you do the opposite. Like so, okay, so if you have a cast, depending upon the kind of cast you have, if it's a, if it's a, a large fracture, you know, where, um, where the bone was actually broken, compound fracture, uh, you know, if it was something like that. Now, I'm talking about, now, again, I'm not doing a class on herbal casts but I can teach you how to make your own cast, your own herbal cast that would actually cause your arm or your leg or whatever it would be to heal faster. Comfrey. Yes, using comfrey and other things, that's exactly right, my brother. But you can also, with those, you can remove them and safely do like he's doing here. You can go ahead and take your arm out, and then, brother, here you go. Go ahead and wipe your arm off. Thank you so much. Welcome. Okay, thank you so much. And so, you can do this. Now, you can add things to the water, but it's not necessary. Jesus, Jesus used hydrotherapy quite a bit in his ministry here on earth. You understand? Hydrotherapy. And then he used water with other things to bring healing. Are there any questions? Because our time is up. Dr. Kellogg used that at Battle Creek very successfully. Yes. Yes, and they got it from Dr. Jackson, uh, a, a non-Adventist uh, doctor that Sister White and uh, Brother White went to, and they did several months of treatments um, that they did. And so, yes, and the Lord has shown. And so there are many, many, many different benefits to hydrotherapy, but I wanted you to see this one specifically because you can do this. If you don't have five-gallon buckets, use a garbage can. Wash it out. I've used garbage cans. That's what I used when I, when I got hurt. I didn't have get buckets. I just used a garbage can, cleaned it out, and then I just put the water in. Boiled some water and put it in. Yes, sir. Can you see what the yes. Yes. And so now let me give you the thing to finish with on this, okay? So you're doing, let's say you're doing hydrotherapy. Now I showed you this here. Now this is Epsom salt. Does anybody know why Epsom salt works so well? Magnesium? Because of the magnesium. Listen to me. The magnesium in here, there is a, there's, a, there's a product that you can buy called Calm. And it is a magnesium supplement, food supplement, that you can take that is very good for the muscles, especially if after you work out. It's for specifically for when you work out quite a bit, and then your muscles are fatigued. You know, you're having different challenges. Some people that work out, and so it will help the muscles so that you won't have the buildup of lactic acid in the muscles. No cramps, that's exactly right. And so, you know, I wouldn't encourage you to take Epsom salt only unless you're going to do a seawater flush, and I don't actually like using Epsom salt for that. But you can, um, but Epsom salt is good for the water. So you can put Epsom salt in your, in your hydrotherapy treatment. It's it just going to be beneficial, okay? 
Yes, arthritis and other things as well. Now, I want to finish with this thought here, okay? We talked about water on the outside. What kind of water do you need on the inside? Pure soft water. Pure soft water. How much? I heard someone say half your body's weight in ounces, right? So your body, you weigh yourself and you drink that much water in ounces, half of that every day. So if you weigh 180 pounds, you drink 90 ounces of water. And if you're having a hard time drinking that water, you can take a little bit of uh, something and put it in there. You can put some strawberries or cucumber or something like that and let it sit in there if you want to change the flavor, if, if you need that, some lemon. Lot, people love to put a little bit of lemon in it. Not lemonade, but just a little bit of lemon juice in your water. It'll, it, it can help it if you have a hard time drinking water. But the other thing that's very good, you know, so when you're drinking your water, is to schedule your water drinking. There is one point here, and I don't know if it's here. Um, sorry, we're not covering all of this. I just didn't have time. What, sheet pack? No. Okay, I don't have it. Um, the thing that you can do with your water is schedule your water. Sister White says that you can drink up to a quart of water before you eat of, of warm water, nice warm water, without doing any damage. So just five, 10 minutes before you eat, 15 minutes, you can drink that water and she says it will prime your body to receive your food. If you drank a quart of water, three of them, before you ate every meal, if you ate three meals, or three, you know, once when you got up and then twice before you ate, you would do, most, most of us, would, that would cover our, you know, you can divide it up in that way. I always say add to what you're already doing in order to get a new habit. If you want to form a new habit, add it to one that you already have. Yes, sir. Wouldn't you be diluting your stomach acid, though, if you do it like five minutes before you eat? Well, see, Sister White says, see, the, see, what happens is if the water is warm, now listen to me, if the water is closer to your body's temperature, the body will automatically let that water pass through. Do you understand? So that's why she says nice, you know, she calls it hot water. So it won't stay in your stomach. So it doesn't stay in your stomach. It just goes straight into your small intestine. Your body absorbs it. So then you don't have to worry about it. Now, now if you feel that there's still water in your system, then you should wait a few minutes. The other thing on that uh, lemon juice thing, if you do use that, you should rinse your mouth to get that lemon out of there. Otherwise, it'll... Yes, the lemon can affect your, the enamel in your teeth. You are correct about that. But listen, many of us have been living without the benefits of water as we could. And just taking a bath, listen, just, you know, if you have arthritis issues, you can do natural things that can help you recover. Okay? Are there any other questions? If there are no questions, would you bow your heads with me as we have a word of prayer? Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you again for your love, your grace, your mercy, your truth. And Lord, we ask for forgiveness for neglecting the water of life that you have so freely offered. And we ask that you would give us grace, Lord, that we might relish the water that proceeds from the throne of the Son of God. Give us a desire for water. Give us a desire for bathing, Lord. Help us that we might recover of the many illnesses and maladies that we have brought upon ourselves by our choices. And Lord, thank you for loving us so. Thank you for sending us a sweet message about water. May we be restored thereby in Jesus' name. Amen.